the president reportedly experiencing minor symptoms. Wink. Uh, he has been prescribed Paxlovid, and uh, his physicians say he has stopped his other two regular medications in order for Paxlovid to take uh, its full five-day effect. That is the course of the dose. It has also been known to cause COVID rebound. That's what Fauci got. Are there concerns that this medication could, in fact, harm the president? Here to discuss Fox News medical correspondent and COVID, the politics of fear and the power of science, author Dr. Mark Siegel. Welcome back, Dr. Siegel. Hi, Kennedy. And no, those were not greasy windshields. That was oily windshields. And I wonder if the state of Delaware is somehow implicated in this. What do you think? I think they are. And I think they're probably going to secede from the pressure because they produced uh, the president, <laughs> who is subpar. Um, but hopefully he is not unwell. What is this antiviral he's taking? And tell me ab about the, the rebound that can occur. Well, first of all, I do think that the fact that he's had four vaccine shots and now is getting an antiviral decreases his risk of severe disease, even at the age of 79. Let's not forget the fact that this variant itself is milder because it doesn't get deep into the lungs. All of this bodes well, but he's suffering from fatigue, and that needs to be watched. I am surprised that he's still working. Now, as far as Paxlovid, you're asking me about that antiviral. I like it. It's patterned after an HIV drug that literally stops the virus in its tracks. But mm. then, of course... The virus can come back, and that's what we see when we get rebound. But what's interesting to me is they didn't give them the monoclonal antibodies that work really well here. I'm surprised at that, and I'm also surprised that they stopped his blood thinner. They could have just cut it down. That puts him at an increased risk of something like a stroke, but the oh, chances God. of that are very, very low. Very, very low. Very low. I expect him to recover. I expect this to remain a very mild case. And I think it's a testament, by the way, to how far we've come. Listen, talk about mandates. I mean, mandates coming back. Are you kidding? This is more of a lesson of, hey, he flew all over the world. He touched, he, he, he fist bumped everybody in sight. The first lady was with him. She's out there with a crummy surgical mask. All of this going on, and we're talking mandates. The lesson that he's unintentionally sending us is get back to life as usual. Absolutely. For people who have COVID and are worried about it and for people who are sending their kids back to school in just a few weeks, you have a lot of school districts around the country uh, that are being you know, very fishy behavior in terms of mask mandates and uh, requiring vaccines for students. Where are we with the virus in terms of what kids should be doing? First of all, that's all political posturing, isn't it? It's yeah. not public health. And, and I, I'm not against a mask. I actually wear masks in close quarters, and I like KN95 masks, but that's my, my personal choice. And I think what we've learned from the pandemic is we should never have closed schools to begin with. That was the teachers' unions, right? And that yeah. cost us dearly in terms of socialization and depression of kids and, and poor nutrition of kids and substance abuse all came out of those terrible decisions. Now we're getting schools to reopen, but young kids, very young kids, do not tolerate masks for the most part. So to force masks on them, to force anything on people right now is a huge mistake psychologically and will contribute to the mental health pandemic that we're currently going through. Now, in terms of, of some of the data that we've seen and the mask studies, most of the masks that people are wearing, as you pointed out, what the first lady was in, they don't work. They're, they're not effective against the virus. So if there are mandates, it's the only way to do it is if you tell people they have to wear a KN95 or an N95 mask. Well, and that doesn't work because they don't wear them, right? So you go to a restaurant, someone takes them off to sit down. They don't put them off in between the appetizer and the main course. They don't put the mask back on. I mean, you know, they take them off whenever they're having a drink. They, talk, they take them off to talk to each other. And then the mask you're talking about, usually it's a subpar mask that somebody's wearing them around their chin. Yes. That's, subpar, that's virtue signaling. That ain't public health. Virtue signaling. And that's not what we need right now. Mandates just get people more and more fatigued, and they don't listen to anything you have to say after that. So, By the way, related point, this vaccine works, but it was mismessaged as it will prevent spread, and therefore we need to mandate it. That was a huge mistake. It cut away from the real issue, which is it cuts down on severity.
Yes, and, and that's what, obviously, the president's doctor is saying now. Because he's been vaccinated and boosted, as you pointed out, four separate times, a uh, really good chance that he won't have any severe illness from COVID. He won't end up in the hospital. But, you know, that's no reason to hamstring everybody else with mandates that simply haven't worked. Uh, we wish the president well. We thank you for your advice. Thank you for being here, Dr. Siegel. Great to be with you, Kennedy, and watch out for an oil slick, will you? <laughs> yeah, it's the worst. All of a sudden, I was in an iron lung. Thank you, Dr. Sengel.